So every year around the holidays, I would always find myself somehow reflecting on my journey as a photographer and everything I do revolving photography. Because I would always remember that the day I bought my first camera, it was the day after Christmas, December 26th, in the year 2007. Well, in reality, I've been shooting a few months before that because I really tried my best to learn photography using a camera that was borrowed from a friend. But somehow, I always kind of officially made that day the official first day of my journey as a photographer. So a couple of days ago, technically, was the 15th anniversary of that day. I've been a photographer for over 15 years now. And this year, instead of keeping things to myself, I thought, well, maybe I could share a few things to some beginners or some people with less experience that might benefit from my reflections about the 15 years that I've had in photography. So in this video, let's talk about the five things I would tell my younger photographer self. Okay, so these five tips definitely will not be technical, they will not be about creativity, they will not be about gear. But instead, these are things that I think any kind of photographer, especially those who are just starting out, would benefit on. These are also tips that I'm pretty sure you don't often read in photography books. The first thing you need to know is that no matter where you are headed, your passion will be the most important fuel in your journey. This is perhaps that one tip that is not based on a mistake, but basically based on something I actually had done right. And perhaps the biggest thing that I did right, especially early on in my journey, was that almost every single day I would play with my camera, try to learn new tricks, no matter what I'm shooting, may it be portraits, or macro still life or whatever i would just always try and see what would happen if i do this or if i do that and i also kind of had the habit of collecting photography magazines way back and i did read them but perhaps the biggest benefit that i got from them is the curiosity i would always wonder how this particular shot was done what required the photographer to be able to do that and whatsoever and from that curiosity, I always knew that my passion was continually filled and refilled. And I just really had so much fun trying to explore photography. It took me over five or six years before I found the kind of photography that I really wanted to do, which is landscape photography. But in that process, no matter what kind of photography I did, I definitely enjoyed. And looking back, the things that I tried to do and tried to play with in those five or six years, they helped me even up till now. May it be when I'm doing architecture photography or landscape photography, or even when I have to shoot products in my studio. Perhaps the most overused advice that you would get from any photographer is that in photography, you just never stop learning. That's true, it's overused, but it's also really so damn true. And the reason why is because if you're really passionate about photography and you really just love what you're doing, then that will fuel you to try and learn more, try to improve yourself, or maybe just, you know, entice you to just keep doing it because it might not even be a form of work for you, but instead it's actually just basically you playing and I remember telling a friend just a few days ago that all I've been doing the past few years was basically just play around with my camera and I've been happy with my journey. Now the second lesson and this is really important you have to learn how to get hurt. You definitely have to learn how to get hurt and how to take things when you do get hurt. I really do believe that anyone who's starting a creative journey, any anyone who's into creative work, maybe photography, may it be digital art or traditional art or performing arts, for example, one way or another, 
you're gonna get comments, you're gonna get criticism, you're even gonna get harsh words. And when you do, it's really important that you know how to filter that and how to take it in. Now, when I say you need to learn how to filter that, I don't mean that you just throw it away. What I mean is that you need to be able to identify what really matters in the message. Now, of course, there are people who just really want to hurt other people's feelings, and these are basically the trolls. These people somehow need to boost their own self-esteem, and the only way for them to do that is by hurting other people and getting validation in doing so. Perhaps the most important thing that you need to learn is when to identify when someone is just trolling you. If that's the case, then there's nothing to be learned except to be tough. However, you will definitely also get harsh and hurtful comments from people who are actually trying to teach you things. Sometimes people can get too hard, sometimes they can get too nitpicky, sometimes they will even go personal. But if you're able to filter out the emotional side of it, they might actually be trying to teach you something. Or sometimes they're not actually trying to teach you something, but there is definitely something that you can learn out of it. In most criticism, there is an aspect that can be constructive. And when you're able to identify that, that will definitely help you in improving your craft. From my own experience, I've had trolls, definitely. I've had to deal with them and I've really learned to ignore them as well. However, I've also encountered people who really just had constructive criticism for me. And I have to admit, at first, my ego would get hurt because somehow I thought that there was this sort of perfection that I have to attain. But in reality, there's nothing perfect in the world of art. There's nothing perfect in the world of photography. But instead, there are things that can make you better. So it was really important for me to learn that it's okay that what I have isn't perfect. But what's important is that my next one will definitely be better. Now in the process, yes, you will get hurt. You might even think of quitting, but don't. If you really love photography, just keep taking it in. Just keep learning from all the lessons that everyone and the world is trying to teach you. And, you know, just keep trying. The most important aspect about learning to get hurt is also learning to get past that and standing up after you fall. Now the next thing is that this journey is not a straight path. And even more so, the destination is not fixed. If you would have asked me 15 years ago what kind of photographer I wanted to be, I would have definitely answered I want to be a concert photographer. Because at the time, that's really what got me into photography. I really loved music, I played in a band, and I really loved watching gigs. So I wanted to bring a camera to every gig I went to and just, you know, photograph my favorite artists. And while I still do love music, if you would ask me now, yes, I would perhaps still go out and shoot some of the concerts that I really want to see. But... I would never trade that for the kind of photography I'm doing now. In the middle of that journey, I also did a lot of portraits, which I am definitely not proud of. But yes, I did shoot portraits for quite a while. And at the time, I really enjoyed that. Then, of course, later on, I found landscape photography. I found architectural photography, which wasn't even planned. I found landscape photography and enjoyed the heck out of it. And since I was still a student and was basically stuck in the city, I did cityscape photography a lot. And my first ever client found me on Instagram and basically was very persistent into getting me to photograph this, their big project. And that was kind of my unexpected entry into architectural photography. I knew nothing about architecture, but I did really love landscape photography and cityscape photography. And somehow their intersections kind of made it possible for me to be able to know how to shoot architecture. Of course, there was a huge learning process in between, but it definitely helped me. Again, my point is it was definitely not expected. Even now that I'm still doing architectural photography and doing landscape photography, I'm doing 
content creation, which is basically, you know, me talking in front of this camera, which is standing on an auto pole that I never thought I would use. But really, all these challenges and all these opportunities that come in, none of them were expected. None of them were things that I would have thought I would be doing 15 years back, maybe not even five years back. But if you're open to these changes, you're open to these opportunities, and more importantly, you are open to these challenges, then there is literally no limit to what you can do. What you might be able to achieve could be way beyond what you could have ever imagined. And that's why it's important for you to know that the journey will have turns and the destination can be changed. Now this next tip, some will agree with this, but some might need a little bit more time to come to terms with this. And that's that your gear will never be enough. Never. Why? Because even if you say, I'm gonna get all these lenses and then that's it. And when you say, I'm gonna get this camera body or these two camera bodies and these lenses, that's it. No, never. Why? Because your workflow will also be evolving. For me, for example, when I first got my Sony system, my first target lens was the 24 to 70 f 2.8 G Master. At the time, the second version was not out yet, the lighter version was not out yet, but even when it came out, I had my eyes on another lens. And recently, I got the Sony 24 to 105 f4. Why? Because I came to terms with the fact that I would want something lighter with a bit more range, even if it doesn't go f2.8. These things are those you realize somewhere along the way while you are shooting, or maybe when you realize that you don't want to carry all that weight anymore. Even if you already have the lenses that you really wanted, somehow one or two of those might be subjected to change. And of course, there's the fact that there will always be new gear. I wanted the A7R4, I didn't get it, then later on I got the A7R5, then that's it. I'm pretty sure somewhere along the way, maybe three years from now, five years from now, the A7R6 or the A7R7 or the A1, A1 Mark II or whatever, I'm gonna want that. So the gear will never be enough, or at the very least, the gear acquisition syndrome will never be over. Now this last one is actually related to that. Your portfolio will never be enough. Here's why. Whenever I would go shooting, I would always be excited whenever I find a photograph that would really look good when it comes to representing me as a photographer. May this be when I'm working on architectural photography or when I'm doing landscape photography for myself. I would always be excited if I know it's gonna turn out to be a great print or maybe something I can put in a book or maybe even something that I can use on an article. And when I put them all together, you know, I would always be so excited about them. But then a few weeks after, a few months after, when I look at them, they're just not as good anymore. And definitely when I look at other people's work, I would always think that there's just something missing in mine. And I would try and see what that is and try to learn how to achieve it and whatever, and I would be happy. Then the cycle just keeps repeating itself. Ultimately, that's something natural because we tend to compare ourselves to others. We tend to compare our work to the work of others. And it will never be the same. It's just that you would always also find inspiration in other people's work. And that's definitely not a bad thing. Now, when you get inspired by other people's work, there's something new in that that you don't have. And definitely, you're gonna want to try to achieve it as well, but that's also going to change your own style. And later on, somehow that new style and your old style are gonna mix and they're gonna mix in your portfolio and it's also not going to be as consistent. And basically, there's always a transition. There's always changes. The important part here is that you accept and you embrace the fact that your portfolio will be ever-changing because your journey is something that will, of course, be changing as well. 
And you never want to reach the end of that changing cycle because perhaps the only way for that to end is either you stop, you quit, or you die. I don't think any photographer or any artist for that matter would be looking forward to the end of their creative journey. And simply because, again, you never stop learning, then you also never stop changing. And that's why your body of work will also never stop changing. And you just embrace that. And you just be happy about your journey. Be happy about where you are, what you've been through, and also look forward to all the challenges and all the triumphs that will definitely come. Because again, you are also fueled by your passion. There we go. Those are the five things that I would have wished for my younger photographer self to have watched on YouTube or whatever. And definitely there's so much more. If you have anything to share, then leave them down below in the comment section. This is perhaps my last video for 2022. And if you've been watching this channel for the past year, then thank you for watching. Thank you for the comments and maybe even the criticism. And if you're new to the channel, of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. And as I repeatedly said, I'm a landscape and architectural photographer. And if you are into those things, then you might want to click that notification bell and that subscribe button. And yeah, I'll see you in 2023.